have you ever watched one of my live call sessions where I call prospects, right? Homeowners live right here on this YouTube channel. Have you ever seen that and just thought to yourself, how in the world, how in the world does he do that? When I say do that, I mean, create deals, create business, uh, create leads out of thin air. Because these people do not know me. It's obvious on the call that this is not set up. I have people hang up on me. I have people that are nice to me, people that are mean to me, people that are awkward, people that are busy, people that are, I have everyone. I'm having the same exact call sessions as you have. I'm getting the same exact people on the phone. But the difference is, is I have learned how to master the process, okay? And that means from start to finish. From the first moment I talk to them on the phone, I know how the whole thing is going to play out and all the different scenarios that could come into play, including them not do a deal, including uh, things go great, including taking a long time, people not doing it. They say they want to sell in three months, but they end up selling in three years. I've been through all of these experiences and I've mastered the entire process. I know what is possible from the first moment that I speak to these people on the phone, but how did I get there? How did I learn how to master the process to the point where for eight years in a row, I picked up 100 more than 100 listings a year for eight years in a row as a single agent with one assistant. I can tell you how because I mastered the process and I want to share with you today, right? I want to give you three steps today that you can take and implement right now, today, and start your process of mastering the listing process. Begin your journey. Take steps towards, because guess what? It's not going to happen in one video. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in one week, one month, or even one year. I hate to tell you, but you know what I can do? I can give you some steps that you can take right now today that will get you heading in the right direction. I'm going to tell you why we're going to use these steps. I'm going to tell you exactly uh, what this looks like. Because honestly, I think this just comes down to a breakdown in realizing what the process actually is. People want to, agents want to go from knowing nothing, starting from zero to listing master, right? Like just, t just tell me everything. Just tell me what I need to know. All I need to do is know things. No, you don't need to know anything. <laughs> you don't need to know nothing. All you need to do is take what you do know and apply it so that you gain experience and therefore over time master. You only master things that you have done over and over and over and over again until the point that you've mastered it. Mastering something is doing something without thinking about it. Okay, It's like breathing, we don't think about it. Tying our shoes, we don't think about it. Eating food, we don't think about it. Driving, we don't think about it. Waking up in the morning, brushing our teeth. Um, you know, whatever we do, most of the things we do, we have mastered. Why? Because we've done it so much. We do these things every single day. That's that's why we have mastered them. How did I get to the point where I have mastered the process of listing and therefore can take those initial conversations and actually turn them into like business, tangible business? Is because there was a point in my life where I did it every day single day for decades. And so that's how I've got to that point. I want to help you begin the journey right now, today. Now, first, I just want to say one thing about the market and the the NAR settlement, etc. I just want you to, to realize that, yes, we talk about the details of it. We talk about the different rule changes, things you can do. But let me let me just break this down for you in the simplest terms. It don't matter. All right. It's literally a non-issue. I've been saying it's a non-issue for a long time. Might the way we do business change? It's absolutely going to change. It's going to change a lot more than I originally thought, than I originally believed. Absolutely. But i tell you something that's not going to change. The fact that closing is going to happen every single day. And people need you as a real estate agent to help them through these transactions. That's end of the day not going to change whatsoever. Might the way we conduct our business, might the way we get paid, might the conversations we have vary. Might we get paid a little more or a little less? Yes, 
that's always the case. If you look at average commission rates over the last, you know, throughout history, the average commission rates have always fluctuated anyway. Has a lot to do with the market, has a lot to do with this, that, the other. Um, but at the end of the day, if you look at worst case scenarios, we still going to be getting paid for the work that we do. Even worst case scenario, it's not going to go down to zero. All right. Not going to go down to zero. And in my opinion, in my opinion, it will always be a very lucrative career to be in. And honestly, look, I'm not in sales anymore. Why, why not? Because I'm always going to level up to whatever the next level is that I can level up to. Um, like real estate, okay? Real estate, I want you to think about this. Like real estate is a great business to build your half a million to a million dollar a year, whatever your goals and ambitions are, two million, three million, you can go as high as you want. But at the end of the day, um, most people, when they get to those higher levels, they're like, oh, this was fun building it. We're here, but now where do I go? Now, where do I go? Because this is still a lot of work. It's not like it slows down. When you get that busy, you stay that busy, right? And it continues. And eventually, you become burnout. And so real estate is one of those industries that is great to get you where you want to be in life, okay? But then from there, you have choices. Now, you've built this machine. You've built this monster. Now, where do we go? And the business skills, the communication skills, the marketing skills that you develop building your real estate business, you can take them anywhere you want to go, anywhere you want to go, which is what I did. I took the skills that I learned selling, marketing, um, creating content, right? And I used it to build another business. And that business does four to five times as much as my real estate business did. Um, so just realize, realize this, like you're not only developing a career here, you're developing skills that you can take with you anywhere you want to go. So go all in on real estate. I said it today. I was on uh, Byron and them's podcast, um, The Real Word, whatever, you, whatever they call it. I, I said technology has come along and people try to say that's going to take us out as an industry. Um, you know, Zilla came along, you know, now we have AI, you know, Amazon um, for subowner.com back in the day, you know, all these little uh, technology um, pivots in our industry that people feared would take agents out like travel agents or bookstores have done nothing but create a scenario where I sell more property in less time. And that will continue to be the case with AI and everything else. And by the way, I believe that we're back up travel agent wise. There's not travel agencies like brick and mortar, but you know, there are more travel. I think there are more travel agents out there in the world right now in the U S right now than there ever were. Think about that for a second. The industry didn't go away. It just had to pivot it just had to pivot to something else. So you've got to be flexible all, at all times. The market changes every single year. You've got to be flexible to just the regular everyday changes that happens every year in the industry, interest rates, prices, inventory, you know, buyer sentiment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then also be ready to pivot your business for these massive changes, which is what we're encountering right now. But the things that when things change, we depend on the things, we, we, we must depend more on the things that never change. And there are things that never change. What never changes? The principles behind the business, right? And that's what I teach on, the principles of the business. Let me dive in here because mastering the listing process is not uh, this mysterious thing, all right? We, we've, I've already said it. To master something means that you gained ex enough experience in it to master it. You've done it enough. You've done, you've, 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 you've went through enough repetitions to understand what this really is. At the end of the day, the bottom line is, is that our job is to create a great first impression that makes people feel comfortable with us. And that great first impression has to be to the level that they feel like this could be the one agent out of 10,000 or how many ever agents are in your market. This is the one out of that many. Like, I think this could be the one out of 1,000, 10,000, 20,000. How many ever agents are in your market? Even if it's 3,000, that's a lot of agents to beat out for somebody to say, huh, this person is different. I'm, I believe they're going to be my agent when I decide to do something. That's what you want. How do you do that? Great first impression. How do you do that? 
tone, body language, and the types of questions that you ask that are geared more towards them and how you can help them versus them helping you, all right? And that's what most agents do. They ask the questions that go get to a deal quicker, and the prospects can see it coming a mile away. They're like, oh, you a dime a dozen. I ain't going to use you. I'm going to use, use somebody that I feel like actually cares about me and what I want, not just what you want, Mr. Agent. So, so let's dive in here. How do you gain experience? Another key point I want to bring up before I give you these three things that you can implement right now today is the fact of, and put in the comments, what do you call a doctor's office? All right, what are doctor offices called? I'll tell you what they're called. They're called a practice. They're called a practice. Why are they called a practice? Huh? It's because they are practicing all day, every day. Even though it's quote unquote the real thing, they're talking to real people that are actually sick. They're diagnosing them. They're prescribing the medicine. They're actually practicing. <laughs> Little, 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 you know, side note, you know, whisper that no, they're just practicing, right? When they're doing open heart surgery on me, guess what? They, I hate to say it, but they just practicing, man. They are practicing so they could be better on the next open heart surgery. It's always a practice. And you need to think about your business in the same exact manner. Every call you make is practice. It ain't the real thing, baby. Practice. When you go to a listing appointment, you're practicing. Whenever, you know, some people won't go to listing appointments because they don't feel like the owner is serious or they won't work with agents or, you know, who cares? If you can get the appointment, take the appointment so that you can just do what? Get some practice. You need practice. The more practice you get, the closer you get to mastering the skill, mastering the process, mastering listing properties, mastering making people feel comfortable with you, mastering what questions to ask, mastering how to listen to people about what they actually want so that you can help them do what they want to do. You see, I don't ever try to get someone to do something. I never tried to get someone to list a property with me. I never tried to get an agent to join my coaching program or do my challenge, what I do is I listen to my prospects, my agents, my sellers, my buyers about what they want to do, and then I do all I can do to serve and help them do it. If they don't list with me, we're still friends. If an agent doesn't join my coaching program, we're still friends. I'm never going to try to get someone to do something, right? Because that's, that, that's counterintuitive. I'm trying to help you do what you already want to do. I don't have to get people to do stuff. They already do it. Closings are happening every single day. Every single day, look in your MLS. There's more closings than you could ever handle for you. The problem is you're not talking to enough people, which let's get into it here. Let's get into it. So the first thing you got to do, and I'm going to go backwards because one thing leads to another leads to another, right? So the first thing is set listing appointment. You need to go on so many listing appointments. Like I don't got no listings. I'm, you know, I wish I could, you know, you know, get some listings. All right. Well, how many calls you making? How many, how many appointments you going on to try to get better at listing appointments so you can start landing some listings? None. Okay. How do you expect to master something that you don't do? Okay. It's going to take you a long time of doing the thing to master the thing, right? And you're not doing it at all now. So when are you going to start doing it to start the process of the long time it takes of doing a thing before you actually become a master of the thing? Because you got to start that process before you're going to end that process. So if you ain't started, then what are we waiting on? So the first thing would be to set links appointment. Now I might be thinking, oh, yeah, I make calls. If you are at rock bottom right now, if you're at rock bottom right this second, uh, you don't you you ain't going on no listing appointments. You ain't even making calls. You know maybe you're making calls but not getting appointments. Whatever the case may be, I'm gonna tell you what right now, for sell by owners, would love for you to come see their home. You could you could set eight out of ten appointments. Now they might be telling you I ain't gonna use an agent. I don't care because guess what? I'm practicing. I'm practicing, baby. 
I'm trying to get better at doing the listening appointments. I'm trying to get better at talking to people. I'm trying to get better at communicating with people, making them feel comfortable with me, becoming likable. That's the number one reason why people choose a real estate agent because they like them. And so at the end of the day, like I can, if I'm at rock bottom I, and go watch my call session, right? The last two call sessions, I want to say, I, 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 like every call session I make is 30 minutes and I pick up so many incredible leads. Like they're the highest, there's not a better lead than what I get on those call sessions. And look, correct me if I'm wrong. You go watch the call session and tell me if I'm wrong about those being the, the, the highest quality leads that you would want. And the thing is, is I'm just like, I can pick anyone. If, I, if, if I'm in, you know, Miami, LA, uh, New York, if I'm in, if I'm in one of these high end luxury play, I could call $20 million homes all day, every day and, and get those leads. You get to literally pick, you have, you have the, 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 you, you have complete control. See, the problem is a lot of agents are dependent on the industry. They depend on the industry to give them leads through Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Zillow, team leaders. They're dependent on something to give them leads, and they have no control of what those leads are, how good they are, et cetera. Right? So instead of being dependent on the industry, I'd rather control my own destiny, which means when I get those leads, I got to call them anyway. And before I call them, before I have a conversation, ain't nothing going to happen. So therefore, conversations are the number one KPI of lead gen. And if that's the case... And I could literally just pick out the ones the, that I want to do business with. And I could just talk to them and have that conversation and go ahead and just skip all this other stuff and go right to the source and control my own destiny. And I, and I still choose to do this and let somebody else and be dependent on somebody else for leads that I have no, no control over the quality of these leads, but I'm going to let somebody control that when I know that there's this option and literally the leads are a penny and they're the highest quality, the leads I get on these calls, go back and watch the calls. I'll put a link at the end of this video for the last call session. Like if you look at any of those leads I got and you would tell me that you would rather have a really expensive Zillow lead over that lead, even if they were the same price, not to mention the leads I get are a penny on Red X, a penny on Red X, get a discount in the description below. It is the only thing that you need because you can literally just create situations. This person wants to sell. Okay, I can go find a buyer using Red X, find smaller properties that want to upgrade. Uh, they want to buy. Okay, can use Red X to find the sellers of the properties they want to buy and say, hey, I got a seller. Uh, uh, how, hey, I got a buyer for your property. Like literally do anything you want for pennies. Have the entire market wrapped up in, your, in, a, in a bow, right? And here's your little present. It's, it's insane. How do you watch what I do and not be like, wow, I didn't know this existed, but now I do. There's no other option. I ain't going to do anything else. I digress. The first thing is setting appointments and going on appointments as often as possible, okay, to get better. Not to get the listing. You might get the listing. You might not. Whatever. You're practicing to learn how to master the process. And so... And so setting list appointments, just right now, right right after this video, go call five for sale by owners and set five appointments for that afternoon or the next day, right? You can go do that right now. Go on appointments and start learning how to talk to people, right? Start the process of mastering this. That's the first thing you could do. Now, now how do you set appointments, right? That brings me to the second thing. Right. You, you know, the, the first thing is setting appointments. The second thing is finding situations. OK, finding situations. What I just said, you got a buyer. OK, you can just go find sellers. And guess what? They may not sell to your buyer, but they may want to buy something else or sell something else or, or, or sell for a higher price than your buyer might want to buy. But you may list it and find another buyer. There's so many scenarios that could play out. But if you're not stirring the pot. If you ain't stirring the pot, nothing's going to happen. Um, I mean, if you make calls, there's a good chance. There, there's almost, there's like a 100% chance something's going to happen. You know, If you don't, there's a 0% chance. And I'm just saying, I could build my entire business. I could build my entire business without making a single cold call. I could, I could make it, I could build my entire business, a million dollar business just on Instagram. 
just on Facebook. I could do another business just on YouTube, just on Zillow leads, just on open houses, just on door knocking, just on cold calling these leads, just on cold calling those leads. Sphere of influence. I could build a million dollar business using any lead source and concentrating on just that one source, right? I, I can. I've developed the skills that I know how to communicate with people, anybody to extract the possibilities of doing business. And I know how to make them feel comfortable enough with me to help them do the business. I can, I can build a million dollar business out of anything, right? But what I realize, so I'm not, I'm not like against social media or anything, man. That's what I'm, I'm doing right now. I'm doing social media. But my point is, is that for real estate agents, the point of social media, and, and put in the comments, true or false, the point of social media for real estate agents is to get into a conversation with someone who might buy or sell a piece of property. All right, true or false? Like that is the goal after all the details and all the, you know, what you're doing, the funnels and all the stuff. You know, at the end of the day, your objective is to hopefully get into a conversation, a real back and forth with someone who might want to buy or sell a piece of property. Yes, that that's that's what the goal is. And so if that's the goal, if that's where we're going to end up anyway, and I have no really control over who's going to respond or what leads are going to come from that. Right. And I have this other opportunity where for a penny, I can call any owner I want and I can actually strategize against situations to call that owner. And I can control exactly what my clientele is. Oh my goodness. I can skip all this stuff and go right to the source for literally nothing and talk to them about whatever situation I want to talk about and go ahead and have the conversation right now that I was I was going to wait on using this other source I was going to wait on a random conversation whereas over here I can have the exact conversation I want immediately so am I going to wait on a random one or have an exact one immediately that's just how my brain works this is how I operate and this is how I got where I am is by looking for little hacks in the system that I can use to my benefit to grow my business faster than anyone else. If I'm falling in line with everybody else and I'm dependent on the industry for leads, right, over here versus an agent who controls their destiny and has conversations at will and can literally create deals out of thin air, which business is going to grow faster? Well, this isn't scalable. You're cold calling people. You're calling people out of the blue. And if you ever stop doing that, then it just ain't going to work anymore. I hate to break it to you, but you too. <laughs> you, you, if you stop posting and you stop having conversations with the people that you're engaging with online, same thing. The difference is, and most people with social media, they're not doing a weekly email. Oh, this is where I get them, boy. This is where I get them. When I call, I'm putting them on a weekly email. They never forget me. People, Most people on social media, they just depend on social media to stay in everybody's face. Well, you don't control the algorithm. Over here, this is much more scalable because when I talk to them, they remember me forever. And I can literally scale my business to the point where I don't prospect anymore. In 2017, I made a million bucks for the first time. I never prospected another day in my life. And I made a million dollars for the next four years, five years in a row. And those last four, I made zero cold calls. I made $4 million with no prospecting at all. Don't sit here and tell me what I do ain't scalable or, you know, it don't, it don't work. It's, you know, you, if you quit making calls, okay, I'm building a career. I know how to scale it. The quick, I know how to quick, I know how to scale it quicker than you, more efficiently than you and higher quality than you. Just saying. Uh, and cheaper, way cheaper. And a lot, you know, you know, it just depends on how you look at it, right? Everybody's different. Everything works. I could build a whole my whole business off of whatever. But again, set appointments, go get the experience, create situate, find situations as you're making your calls that you can then pursue, right? For example, the call session I just did, I'll link it at the end. I talked to a for sale by owner. They'll they'll pay a buyer agent four and a half percent. Okay. Um, I said, okay, bet. Don't hand me 4.5% and expect me to give it back to you. I literally called the neighborhood right next door to see if they wanted to upgrade to that. So that's a situation that I then pursued to find a buyer for. Through that process, I found a, a, an owner who didn't want to buy that house, but they want to buy a waterfront home. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't tell me you want to do a deal and expect me not to try to do it with you. 
Um, so I took a situation, then I used it to find other situations that I'll then call the waterfront homeowners that fit the criteria for that buyer, right? And then that waterfront property owner is going to want to do this and going to want to do that. And the whole thing just continues to roll downhill like a locomotive. Um, do you understand the, 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 the time between contact to close the first time you contact someone, how long, even if they wanted to sign the listing today or sign a purchase agreement today and went under contract, you still got a good month or two before you get paid. And there's a lot of work in between. That's if they wanted to sign today. A lot of these prospects you talk to the first for the first time, it's going to be weeks, months, or even years before they actually start the process of doing a deal with you. You know how much happens in between? You need, you need to front load your business with as many great first impressions as you can on the front end so that on the back end, you've got this massive, massive business. And the problem is agents, they're not talking to enough people. They're not front loading their business with enough people who know who they are. A lot of them don't have a retention model in place where they never forget them. And later on down the road, they're just like st stuck because they, they didn't do any of these things. And now we are where we are and they're right where they were from the beginning. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying. I'm with all I have. I'm trying to help you. So we've got set appointments. Go do it. Where's that come? It comes from chasing situations, right? It, it doesn't have to be off of a call. It could be a listing you have or even off market. Okay, go find a buyer. Boom. Now you're calling property owners of a smaller, smaller property to find a buyer for that property. And then you find other situations. It could be a buyer that you have. Maybe your uncle wants to buy something. Great. I'm going to call all the sellers and find me some situations that I will then pursue, right? Find situations. And when you find situations, understand to the depths why they want to do what they're trying to do and decide based on that if the next step is an appointment, right? What is the next step? We don't know the next step is until I understand why they want to do what they're trying to do, how they want to do it, when they want to do it. I don't know. I have to ask all of these questions and there within helps you stand out from your competition because most agents aren't asking those questions. They're just, I'm going to do the deal right now. You know, let's go see it. Let's do this. Let's do that. We'll sign a piece of paper. We'll be good to go. Um, set appointments comes from looking for situations. And where does that come from? You got to make calls, start making calls. You literally control your own destiny when you do it like I do it. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science at all. You make calls. You have conversations. If you get Zillow leads, you got to call them and have a conversation. If you get an Instagram lead, you got to call them and have a conversation. Any lead that comes through, you got to call them and have a conversation anyway. Why not just go ahead and have the conversation with the people that you actually want to do business with instead of some people that you don't want to do business with? Uh, let's be honest. Nobody really wants a first-time home buyer. Nobody really wants a random Zillow lead that's going to run them all around town. Nobody really wants a, uh, you know, Instagram, you know, lead. Like they turn into stuff. And I know agent, do I know agents that are doing five hundred to a million bucks Instagram only. I could build that business, right? I, I can do it. I could do it. I'm just saying, if you want to really crush it right now. You could have so many situations happening right this second where if you do it the way I do it, you call three hours a day, even three days a week for like three, four weeks, you won't have time to make calls anymore. You'll have so much business going on that you'll be servicing. You won't even have time to make calls anymore. And then you're going to start to feel like, oh my God, my business is going to slip because I don't have time to make my calls. That's okay though. That's why we make calls so that we have business to service. All right. Anyway, I hope this helps. Um, I'll be doing the challenge next week, the Set More Listing Appointments Challenge. I'll put a link in the description for that. It starts Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Be there. Be there because I'm going to teach you more than you ever even thought was possible for these four days. And until then, I'll see you on the next video. Love you guys.